Hi, I'm Ashley from Ashley and Music Studio, and today we're going to talk about piano posture. Posture is incredibly important. When we play the piano, we use our whole entire body. It's not just our fingers that are moving. We utilize our wrists, our elbows, our shoulders, our backs, our legs to stabilize us. Really, the whole body is involved. We're going to go through eight different things to pay attention to with your piano posture so that you can play as beautifully as possible. If you've been liking my videos, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so that you can stay up to date. So the first thing that's really important is to sit nice and tall. We're not hunched over. We don't have any arch in our lower back. We just want to sit up nice and tall. My check-in points for sitting up nice and tall are that my back is straight, my core is tight, but my shoulders are relaxed and I'm breathing. It's really important throughout this whole entire process to continue to check in with yourself. A lot of the times when I start to talk about posture with students, I see people instantly tense up and their shoulders start to rise and they start to get really tight. We don't want that. As we're talking about posture and we're paying attention to posture, we want to make sure that we stay nice and loose, nice and relaxed, and that we're sitting in alignment. The second really important thing to think about is your bench height or your keyboard height, depending on what kind of instrument that you're playing on. Ideally, when we play, we want our elbows to be making a 90 degree angle so that our arm looks like an uppercase L. If we're too high on our bench, it's gonna cause our arms to be extended like this. If we're too low, it's gonna cause our arms to be in a V shape like this. Neither of those helps us support a beautiful sound when we're playing. We want to make sure that our arms can hang loosely from our shoulders and therefore that 90 degree angle is really important. If you don't have a piano bench that adjusts height, you can sit on a stack of books. Yes, I've done that. You can try a lower chair or if you're on a keyboard, you can adjust the height of the keyboard or try placing it on a table that's higher or lower. The next thing that we want to check is our bench distance. Like we talked about before, we want our elbows to make that 90 degree angle and we also want our elbows to essentially be about parallel with our torso or slightly in front of our torso. But we don't want our arms to be extended straight and we don't want our elbows to be behind our torso. So you're sitting with the center of your torso in the center of the keyboard and you're just far enough away that your arms are parallel with your torso. Next point, which I already mentioned, but it doesn't hurt to mention again, is to keep your shoulders nice and relaxed. You can even write relax in your music to remind yourself to check in and make sure that you are relaxed. The next thing that we're going to look at is our hand. And when we play the piano, we want to make sure that our fingers make this nice C shape. I can think about it as holding a bubble or holding a tennis ball. I'm sure you've noticed before that the keys on your piano are in a straight line. And if we hold our hand out like this, our fingers do not make a straight line. So in their natural position spread out like this, our hand position is not very conducive to playing keys in a straight line. When we have that C curve in our hands, all of a sudden our fingertips make a straight line. And once you have your C curve, you want to check in with your wrist. We don't want our wrist to be down here and we don't want our wrist to be up here. In these first stages of learning piano, we want our wrist to be nice and straight and somewhat strong. If I pushed down on my wrist, it wouldn't collapse. And if I pushed up, it wouldn't go up it would stay in this nice neutral place. Eventually in your piano playing, wrist flexibility is going to be really important and we want to be able to move that wrist to float on and off the keys. But in the beginning stages, just work on keeping your wrist nice and straight. Now after we have our C curve and we have our nice straight wrist, we want to make sure that we're playing on the finger tips. I like to tell my students that we're almost playing on the fingernail part of our finger and yes, you will maybe need to cut your nails. This ensures that we can move around the keyboard quickly and be where we need to be. One of the most common errors that I see is people playing with flat fingers. Not only will this create a lot of tension and could possibly lead to injury, but it doesn't produce a great sound and it's not conducive to playing pieces beyond the beginner level. Now the last important thing in our piano posture is to keep our fingers glued to the keys. We're going to make sure that all of our fingers stay down on the keys. So commonly in the beginning stages, we might play a note and have the rest of our fingers pop up like this. That's what we want to prevent. We want to play a note and keep the other fingers in the C curve touching the keys regardless of if they're playing or not. It can be really challenging in the beginning stages. If you devote the time and mental energy into getting good at this skill now, things will be a lot easier for you in the future. So check in with your posture, go forward and practice. Good luck.